Hello and welcome back to the Tibby Show. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to get the achievement Hardly Anything Severus, uh, as well as just being an ultimate guide for forming the Ottoman Empire in Holy Four. Hardly Anything Severus achievement used to be ridiculously hard, but ever since No Step Back, it's actually quite easy. It's just a little bit tedious. So the first thing we need to do is choose January 1st, 1936. Uh, my map might look a little bit different than all of your guys's, and that's because I have two mods on that are uh, Iron Man compatible. One is the FPS map mod, which is quite nice, and I also have the uh, Satisfying Puppets and Country Names mod. It just gives a little bit of variety after uh, 3k hours. It's going to be regular difficulty, Iron Man mode on of course, and historical AI. Our first focus is going to be the Montreux Convention. This is going to remilitarize our straits. We're going to build artillery through factories on that and then put two factories on support equipment once you have them available and just build some convoys. For research, we're gonna just focus kind of on industry. We're just going to build military factories right now in our highest infrastructure states and we're going to build a spy agency. This is something you have to do. These are going to be the researches I get. Uh, the ones you need definitely are going to be localized training center and psychological warfare. You can choose whichever ones other you want, but these are the five that I recommend. Always get seducers or those from the nationality of the country that you're going to be spying on. The United Kingdom loans its support, gives us a little bit of uh, war support. Next, we're going to fully integrate the IS Bank. The United Kingdom backs down, that's fine. And is what it is. The Soviet Union backs down as well. The Soviet Union will always back down in historical. First we're going to get an elusive gentleman and then we're going to get the financial expert. Just continue on mechanical engineering. Next we're going to ratify the six arrows and we're going to put another spy but this time we're going to be boosting our ideology on Hungary. So the reason for this is because they renounced the Treaty of Trianon Focus, which is the focus that they continue down to join the Axis, uh, can be hardlocked if A, they never turn Brown Party, or B, they never reach 40% Brown Party support. We are going to be preventing them from ever getting 40%. The Strength in the Brown Party Focus for around two and a half years will give a daily 0.03% support. If you put your spies on it at the beginning of the game, you will hardlock them out of their focus tree. This will give you a free war goal because the UK will refuse to guarantee Hungary at the start of World War II, and they will not join the Germans. If they turn Brown Party and you declare war on them, they will join the Germans by default. And now that we have 200 political power, we're going to be inviting German and Italian scientists for a 10% research boost uh, combined. Now we're going to be doing the uh, Treaty of Sabadad. This is going to give us non-aggression pacts with the Muslim states, such as Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, and Iran. This will also later allow you to puppet them. And we're going to be putting another spy on Greece. All three have said yes. We're going to be doing that focus, whatever the name is. One of our spies has been caught, so we'll quickly rescue them. This is going to happen a lot. It's annoying. Next, we're going to be privatizing the Analu uh, agency. This is going to prevent us from uh, instituting press censorship. That's fine. Excavation one. Now we're going to cooperate with the Debt Council. Uh, at this point, make sure you save up at least 120 uh, political power. Gonna do radio just because it is quite nice. And I'm going to make a European agency so that I can start recruiting spies from Europe. Now that cooperation with the Debt Council is done, I'm going to lift the ban on political parties. This is going to start giving us uh, events. Now that we've absorbed the uh, TPDA, we're going to start funding these factories because we're not building civilian factories. This is going to give us like three or four civilian factories before uh, 1939. Next, we're going to utilize foreign capital. An opposition movement begins to form. We're going to trial them all very publicly and give them the harshest sentences possible. This is going to boost our non-aligned and give us stability. 
traditional group mobilizes rural citizens and bid to increase voter turnout, we're going to do the democratic will of the people shall be known. Now that we have two factories on support equipment, we're just going to put the rest of our factories on guns because we're going to need a lot of guns. And I'm going to get the army defense minister uh, so that we can start getting in some army experience. I recommend getting this guy because you will lose all the other guys uh, during your civil war, except this guy. He's not the best, he's just a 10% division defense, but we'll have to make do. And Mustafa has gotten sick in February 11th. He will get sick in between February and May. The earlier, the better. And we're going to retire Ataturk. So the reason we want to retire Ataturk is we need to take the focus, assess our future. If Ataturk is still your leader when you take this focus, or if you have the election before he retires, then you just get a negative 5% debuff for this focus. But if you retire him, it gives you a 15% bonus to stability, a 0.10% political power gain, and a 2.02% daily democratic support. Uh, you don't have to worry about that democracy support, it'll never become a problem. The cooperation could bear fruit in the future. With the best party win, the Democratic Party has formed. And now we're going to hold our first multi-party election. Always choose the Democrat Party, that's the only way that you will get the uh, Ottoman Empire to form. Now we're going to do the Hete issue. And our spy got caught again, this is going to happen a lot, it just is what it is. We're going to build some more military factories. I like to build it in the north. And another civilian factory. And Ataturk has died a second time. Next we're going to do peace in our world. The French will always give this to you. Now we're going to do the, uh, I don't know if YouTube wants me to say this word. We're going to get the cast designer because I want to make planes, cast is king. Next we're going to do the militant Adami, this is going to give us 250 political power. Save it, you need 300 political power before you do purge the officers. I did end up getting a researching truck and now I'm going to be getting support weapons 1. At this point you can kind of start focusing on your military while keeping up with your industry. We're going to expand our armament so that we can get two furry military factories. And we're going to get that boost to war support again. Feel refining too. Our agent has been captured a third time. This is very annoying. It will happen to you. I suggest using Hungarian spies instead of seducers if you get them. They'll still be caught, it's just less likely. And we're going to privatize our infrastructure. This is going to give us a few uh, infrastructure all throughout our states. We're going to do interwar small airframe. And we're going to be boosting democratic support in Hungary now. And purge the officers. I'm going to be making a two width artillery division. The reason for this is because if you switch uh, all of your divisions to a two width artillery before your civil war, once you are near Civil War, the AI doesn't know how to switch it back. So you will be fighting two with artilleries, while you can switch it to a two with a uh, cavalry division. Is this a little exploity? Sure. But look, Paradox gave me the, the option. Paradox put it in the game. It's not my fault. And I'm going to get Engines 1, another civilian factory, and we're going to get that again for more uh, war support. Make sure you keep before the Civil War at least 300 political power, it is incredibly important. And now that we are in our Civil War, we're going to do Learning from the Great War, it's a 35 day focus. We're going to get extensive conscription, war economy, just rush all of your soldiers to victory points, switch them over to two with calvaries. Race and take those military points before they can spawn in uh, any actual divisions. It doesn't take them long to do it, but you should have this war won within like 15 days. There we 
There we go. We are now the provisional state of Anatolia. And we're going to switch over some of our troops. The six divisions uh, will be switched over to our 12 wits. And we're going to make a special uh, shock trooper division, which is going to be 20, 27 wits with three artillery and support artillery. And our s armies of seven will be switched over to them. And we're going to be putting them next to the uh, Aegean Islands. And we're going to pivot to the past. We're going to get ground support. And just continue researching airframes. Engine 2 is done, so now we're going to get heavy machine guns. And we're going to get aircraft construction so that we can get those uh, dive bombing frames. And now we're going to purge the Kabbalists. More military factories. Support weapons too. And we're going to get into our artillery. Another civilian factory. We're going to restore the Devon. And we're going to get military police. At this point, I'm not going to be showing you guys what to research. I've given you a very strong foothold. Just keep up with your uh, industry. Just research whatever you want. And we're going to be rebuilding our nation. And then the return of the Sultan. We're going to get this inventive genius. He gives a small boost of political power and a small boost to our industry uh, research. I'm going to be building an army of 24 of these 12 wits. This is so that my invasion of Yugoslavia is a lot easier. We do have a death set of guns, but that's alright. And by 1939, you don't really need to be keeping your spies on Hungary. Their focus that boosts uh, the Brown Party support is no more. It ends in 1938, like September of 1938. So they're no longer getting Brown Party support. So you can just put your spies on Yugoslavia. And the Sultan has returned. The Ottoman Sultanate is reborn. Much to the entire world's dismay, the Ottoman Sultan has been restored. Just, uh, that a particularly brutal civil war between the countries conservatives and the secular, secularists, secularists to most. Uh, since I have a bunch of uh, command power that's no longer ticking up, I'm just going to start recruiting uh, officers now because we're going to need a lot when we go to war with Germany. And we're going to be putting our fleet into the Central Mediterranean, the Eastern, and the Aegean Sea. Make sure you exercise your troops. Exercising is incredibly important. You won't be able to beat the Greeks if you don't exercise. We're going to make 10 two-width cavalry divisions. These guys are going to navally invade Greece. And now we have a war goal on Greece. We're going to press the hostile Hungarian claim. This is going to give us a bunch of claims. It's going to give us a core on Bosnia. Uh, and it's going to give us a war goal on Yugoslavia as well as Romania. And we are going to go to war. Take just one of these Aegean Islands. Uh, I suggest Samos, but sometimes they have troops there. Just take one of the islands and use the other one as an encirclement tool. For your naval invasions, just put each one division onto a uh, victory point. You will lose two or three of these divisions to uh, Greek submarines. It is what it is. and encircle. Just wipe each division out that comes over. More military factories. Another division, another division.
they've lost 131 troops. We can still kill a few more. World War II is about to kick off. Uh, launch your naval invasions now and rush victory points. The Greeks will still have defenders, that's okay. Use some of your divisions to pin troops down so that you can very quickly uh, rush other victory points. And Greece has capitulated. Annex everything and take their entire fleet. And we're going to be making 20 of those uh, shock trooper divisions. We're going to alter the royal laws of succession. If you want the Sultina, you have to do that. And we're going to put 2027 width right on the border uh, so that they can very quickly take over Sophia. And then our army of 12 widths, uh, 24 12 widths, is just going to be covering the whole border to hold the line. And we're going to start making some trucks because we need them. We're going to get some uh, rubber from the Dutch East Indies and another civilian factory. We have done the Align Bulgaria focus. This is incredibly important. Do expand the Sabadad Pact now. If you do reclaim the empire, Damascus Dikit, you will not be able to puppet Iraq, uh, Iran, Afghanistan. They will just enter your faction and that focus will be bypassed. Just make sure you do expand the Sabadad Pact first. The moment World War II kicks off, which is usually uh, sometime in August, make sure you justify a war goal on the Kingdom of Hungary. They will not be guaranteed, they will not join the Axis if you had spies on them. And they have declined the Allied Guide Our Sword. We will take the Sardom of Bulgaria down. And now that we are at war with Bulgaria, we're going to enter into a faction with Romania. And just rush your troops. This war is very easy, but it is micro-intensive. Uh, worry more about their victory points and less about their actual soldiers. The moment World War II kicks off, which is usually uh, sometime in August, make sure you justify a war goal on the Kingdom of Hungary. They will not be guaranteed, they will not join the Axis if you had spies on them. Rush those victory points, make encirclements. Do not puppet them, just annex outright. Bulgaria does not deserve autonomy. They don't have a fleet to take, that's fine. Next, divide those 20-27 uh, widths into two armies of 10. One's going to be put on the border with Romania and Yugoslavia so that we can rush and take Belgrade. And the other 10 width is going to be used to navally invade Yugoslavia. This shoreline right here is usually very unprotected, so you should land with no problems. Also put one army of 12 widths to support the naval invasion once they land, and then your other army of 24 will be placed right on the border with Yugoslavia to protect your borders. Next, combine your entire fleet. We're going to put them in at the Adriatic Sea, and I'm just going to play a little bit train simulator right now. Next, I'm just going to put some military police on this two with cavalry division I made. This is going to be my uh, garrison division. Next, declare war on Yugoslavia, call in Romania. Slow down the speed, rush over to Belgrade as fast as you can with your army of shock troopers, launch that naval invasion. You've now opened up the third front. If you do this, this war is pretty easy, you shouldn't lose too many men. For doctrines, I'm going to be going down superior firepower. This is the best for a smallish army. Yugoslavia is pretty close to capitulating, just a little bit more. They are right at capitulation. There we go. 
just annex everything. Uh, Romania shouldn't take anything if you did this right. Annex everything. If they have a fleet, take their fleet. Now we're going to be putting our armies onto the border, and we're going to put our entire navy onto the Central Mediterranean, the Tyrrhenian Sea, the in the Western Mediterranean Sea. I'm going to be putting one artillery division onto our 12 width, so making to a 15 width. And we're going to kick uh, Romania out of the faction. This is going to give us a this is going to give us a truce for a few months. And I'm going to put some spies on Romania. I'm just going to start making some torpedo bombers. Uh, we're going to need them against the UK and we're going to need them against Spain. And I'm just going to make a very cheap fighter with just with engine 2 and heavy machine guns. Declare war on Hungary and justify war goal on the Spanish state. Rush Budapest, rush all of the uh, victory points. This is a very easy war, but you want to win it quickly so that your troops have time to uh, get to the border with Romania before they can join the Axis. Now we're going to reclaim the Fallen Empire. Uh, when you do the Maxis Dicat, if France or Vichy France says no, that's fine. It gives you a free war goal. And just puppet the entire thing, take resource rights and factory rights. They have no fleet to speak of. Put your entire army on the border with Romania. I'm going to be putting my shock troopers on the border uh, with Romania's capital. And then the rest of my troops are just going to hold the border. Declare war. This war is fairly easy. Uh, just do as many encirclements as you can. Uh, take their victory points and most importantly, take all their supply depots. Don't just full rush, you have to be very strategic in this war. And just annex the entire thing, take their fleet if they have one, and then prepare your naval invasion for uh, Spain. I suggest putting your uh, naval invasion on the city of Valencia. For air doctrine, we're going to do battlefield support, just go down. We're going to get dive bombing, and we're going to get bold attack for our army command, as well as professional army corps. Next, we're going to do Reclaim the Fallen Empire. This is going to give us the option to get cores on many of our lands, uh, most notably on Romania and on Yugoslavia. Now we're going to do the Pan-National Association of the Olmas. This is going to puppet Iraq, Afghanistan, and Iran. Make sure you have your spies on the Spanish state. If you don't have spies on there, you get a 50% debuff to uh, naval supremacy just by default because you don't have intelligence on them. Declare war. And it should just take a moment. 49. There we go. Our fleet has launched as well as our uh, naval invasion. Just do force attack and you will eventually land. Your troops are better than theirs. Spain doesn't have the largest army. The annoying part about fighting Spain is not all of their land is cores. So you're going to just have to rush to the north. This is incredibly important. Before you delete your faction, you have to reinstate the... This will give you an extra research slot. You don't necessarily need it, but it is quite helpful. There we go, Spain is taken. I like to take the southern states just around Gibraltar. Uh, I like to take the African states, and I like to take their islands. The rest you can just puppet, take resource rights, take factory rights, take their fleet. More military factories. And we're justifying a war goal on Free France. This will only take 20 days. This is going to enter us into World War II. Justification is done. And that focus is done. So now I'm going to support the East. I'm going to delete my faction before entering the war. The reason for this is because I want to join the Axis. Join the war. Germany will invite you. Join it. Prepare your naval invasion uh, over to Dover. This port is usually very free. Bring over your entire air force, all your naval bombers. We're going to be bombing the British fleet in the English Channel. Hopefully we can do a little bit of damage. 
and I like to use Gibraltar just the same way as we did the Aegean Islands. Uh, we can't do this for long because we do need to move our fleet over, but might as well take a couple British divisions. Uh, I forgot that the British actually took one of the Italian islands right next to Turkey. Um, so they are invading us. Take Gibraltar. The Soviet Union has demanded Bessarabia. It's fine, just give it to them. Put your spies on the United Kingdom. And as you can see, we have naval supremacy. Thank you, spies. Launch your naval invasion. Put force attack just in case there are any divisions. And there are none. Rush to the ports. Rush your troops. Make as much space as possible. Take London if you can. Thankfully, my allies are containing the uh, British menace inside uh, Turkey and launch your entire main army. The war with the UK is very easy at this point, just beat them before May of 1941. We have taken the Suez, we control the Mediterranean. And we're going to justify a war goal on Vichy, France. They are guaranteed by the Germans, but we are in a faction with the Germans, so it's free real estate. I suggest just taking things that you can core. Don't worry about anything else. Also take Gibraltar. Next, I like to puppet the uh, Dutch East Indies. It gives you a source of rubber, and it also gives you a perfect space to navally invade. To navally invade Japan from. Take resource rates. Get everything that you can test it. We're going to puppet India. My recommendation when doing these peace deals is to not use all of your points. Save a little bit just in case you do get contested because you want all the states that you want. Just be very strategic on the ones that you choose. I decided to puppet the UK and the Falkland Islands because it's funny. And I'm gonna take some of the British ships and some of the French ships. And I'm going to puppet the uh, Levant as well as all of Egypt. going to prepare an invasion uh, of Vichy France. You have to take North Africa because it is Vichy France uh, core territory. And I'm going to set my army on the border of Spain and Vichy France. I'm going to make this now, uh, my 12 widths are now going to become 21 widths. I'm going to put my entire navy onto the Western Mediterranean and we're going to do Imperial factories. I'm going to give all of my foreign guns over to China just to distract uh, the Japanese a little bit longer, they're doing a little bit better than I'd want them to. And I'm going to give a bunch of my own homemade equipment over to the Kingdom of Iraq so that I can annex them a little quicker. And I'm going to build in them so that I can puppet annex them. Hero Factories is done. And we're going to do refining our strategies, which gives us a bunch of uh, gives us a bunch of percent offs for our doctrines. We're going to declare war on Vichy France, rush their victory points. It's a fairly easy war. Don't call in any of your allies except Spain, which is your puppet. Vichy France is pretty easy, uh, once you start getting to the mountains, it does get a little bit annoying.
and annex all of North Africa. Puppet France up in the north. Take all of their fleet. And I actually decided to just let Vichy France live in Africa because that's funny. Just kill me already. I'm a villain, not a monster. We're going to justify war goal on Saudi Arabia now. This is a very easy war. We're going to core Tunis and Algeria. We're going to put our army all throughout our borders with Saudi Arabia. This is, again, a very easy war, but just rush victory points. You don't want them joining the uh, Chinese alliance for some reason. Next, we're going to make some casts. and declare war, rush all their victory points. I did end up calling Iraq in, just so that I can have my troops marching from Iraq. I'm gonna build some uh, naval bases so that I can get a bunch of supply in that area for when I launch my army there. And Japan has just declared war in the Philippines. Things are about to go down. Annex the entire thing, they don't have a fleet. We're going to court most of uh, Arabia. This is also gonna give us a war goal on the uh, Sultanate of Moscat and Oman. We're going to justify a war on Yemen. I'm also going to put the vast majority of my army over in Malaysia. Declare war on Oman. Rush those. That one victory point. Again, very easy war. Annex the entire thing. They don't have a fleet. Same reason as before, I'm just going to promote some more officers while I have command power. And prepare your uh, naval invasion for Nagasaki. No Germany, I won't give you soldiers. Build a bunch more military factories. Yemen is pretty easy, they don't have good troops. And we can now core Yemen. Next, declare. So, Japan should, in theory, declare war on you, but in this game, this is the first game that I noticed it, they actually didn't, so I justified a war goal on them. It took 20 days. Uh, launch your naval invasion when you have spies on there, it's very easy. Take the port of Nagasaki and rush over, the, uh, over those straits and just hold them. Now that your whole army has been brought over, just rush to the Japanese victory points. Most of their army is stuck in China. and their army that's not stuck in China is just about to be encircled. And since we have so few war score, I'm just going to puppet Japan starting with Tokyo. Puppet Annex Japan. 
and I'm gonna justify a war goal on Albania. Okay, so my soft, my recording software actually crashed at this point. Uh, my computer is a potato, so let me just explain what I did. I have left the Axis and I am justifying a war goal on Albania. So Italy, after leaving the Axis, Italy very quickly declared war on my puppet of France. Again, my video crashed, so I lost that footage. Uh, I am now recording in five minute intervals, hoping that I don't lose anything. The Germans still have not joined, it is just Italy. Tragedies befall the royal family, long live the new Sultina. She is really good, she has a lot of buffs. Rush victory points, and then we're just gonna kinda wait for that civil war to fire. Once the civil war fires, uh, Germany will be called into the war. They just always join at this point. Call in Hungary. And you can just field marshal order your troops. Your troops are a little bit more prepared than the Germans are. Just march into the Germans uh, and circle and circle and circle. And Take the things you need for the achievement, which is going to be London, Paris, and Rome, and take everything that you can core. Once you have that, you can kind of just do whatever you want. Uh, I'm just messing around in the uh, peace deal just to make as much of a mess as I can. and I'm actually going to be puppeting Germany inside Canada. Because I can. And there we go, this is what the world looks like. Thank you for watching, have a great rest of your day.